right friends welcome back to learning space this is a quick wrap up this is the ninth module let me start with livestock census 20th livestock census were held in 2019 prior to that 19th livestock census were held in 2012 after the livestock census when one looks at cattle population west bengal became number one state in cattle population it replaced uttar pradesh this is the first prominent thing all of you should understand second is when i talk about livestock that does not include poultry this is the second point third livestock population increased by 4.6% but that increase is primarily driven by sheep and goats sheep population increased by 14% goats population increased by 10% whereas cattle population increased by just 0.8% then buffalo's population increased by just 1% so the livestock population increase of 4.6% that is primarily driven by sheep and goats pigs population declined by 12% you may have a pertinent doubt which has got the highest absolute numbers when one looks at the absolute numbers cattle is the highest cattle is around 190 million or so then comes goats goats are around 135 million or so then comes buffaloes so this order do not forget that is cattle goats buffaloes one more prominent point from these census is increase of exotic or crossbred the exotic or crossbred increased by 32% whereas indigenous breed milch cattle increased by just 1% this is another important point why because the average milk yield of the indigenous cattle is just around 2 and 1/2 liters whereas the average yield of this cross bred cattle is around 7 and 1/2 liters because of that reason now there is huge increase in the cross bred cattle by 32% in comparison to just 1% increase in the indigenous milk cattle one more thing is female cattle increased by 18% whereas oxen or male cattle decreased by 30% similarly male buffaloes decreased by 42% if you look at cattle three is to one ratio is there cows and oxen or cows constitute around 75% of the cattle and oxen constitutes remaining 25% these are the prominent things when one looks at livestock census of 2019 right friends then knptr this is kaziranga national park when one looks at kaziranga national park one prominent thing is brahmaputra river that passes through kaziranga national park most of the kaziranga national park is situated towards the southern side of brahmaputra and part of it is situated towards northern side of brahmaputra and papithora papithora is situated towards southern side of brahmaputra orang is situated towards northern side of brahmaputra when i am talking about assam tehing patkai wildlife sanctuary this is the most prominent one in the news tehing patkai wildlife sanctuary that is proposed for conversion to national park one more dibru saikova national park it is also into the news then this positive negative feedback loop quite often these terms are in the news we already deliberated about climate emergency tipping point then fridays for future movement etc and on similar lines when one talk about this climate related issues positive feedback loop that means if some change took place subsequently if that change is further accentuated if that change leads to further change that is positive feedback loop one example is black carbon if a black carbon is deposited on the glaciers or on the icy surface subsequently the albedo of the ice that will be reduced it absorbs more heat 
and subsequently melting of ice takes place. That is one example of positive feedback loop. Like that, you can quote any number of positive negative feedback loops. These are in the climate change discussions. Suvitha. Suvitha that is biosanitary or biodegradable sanitary napkin and it degrades automatically in a few months and the cost is rupees 1 per each piece but now it is the rupees 1 per pad then journal master plan Bhagirathi this is into the news this pertains to Uttarakhand when I am talking about Uttarakhand one more point comes to my mind that is Chardham project Uttarakhand Chardham project and infrastructure projects Previously, we deliberated most of them. Then Greta Thunberg. All of you are familiar. She is associated with Fridays for Future movement. She belongs to Sweden. Recently, she is into the news in the context of Gulbenkian Prize for Humanity. It is 1 million euro prize. Then Kurma. This is about the turtles. I need not explain. It is the old news item. Let us look at science and technology related events. First one is when one looks at COVID-19, let me tell you some more aspects. One is serological surveys. Serological surveys, this is basically done to look at the extent of the prevalence among the population. Suppose some disease is there or for example COVID-19. COVID-19 affected how much percentage of people to understand that serological surveys are conducted. Serological services are prominently to look at antibodies in the human beings because of a particular infection or particular virus or particular bacteria or because of particular disease you can say. So serological service that is one aspect. Second is ELISA test. ELISA test is developed by ICMR and that is used to look at antibodies for COVID-19 in the human beings. You can say ELISA test is conducted to know the prevalence of antibodies in the human beings. So for serological studies, ELISA test can be used. This is the second point. Third is cytokines because when cytokines are excessively released. In the previous lecture, we deliberated cytokines. These are in fact promoted by T cells. Or you can say these are chemical messengers and this is the initiative of T cells. So cytokines are into the news in the context of COVID-19. Right. Then hydroxychloroquine. This is used to treat COVID-19 patients. Then remdesivir. This is another drug. Then convalescent plasma therapy. Convalescent plasma therapy means the plasma for the patients or you can say the plasma is taken from the patients affected by COVID-19. Plasma means you take blood. After that, you take out particles like red blood cells, platelets like that. You take them out. So, therefore, plasma contains antibodies. So, treating the persons affected with COVID-19 with the plasma of the persons who were previously affected with COVID-19, that is convalescent plasma therapy, right? There are diverse opinions with regard to treatment protocols with convalescent plasma therapy. Anyhow, one thing you should not forget, it is not permanent treatment option. It is used as a stop gap arrangement till a vaccine is found, till some drug is invented. So this is convalescent plasma therapy. This is not exclusively for this particular disease. Previously also for several diseases, this convalescent plasma therapy was tried and used as a stop gap measure. So in the context of COVID-19, these are all in the news. Cytokines, serological studies, ELISA test. ELISA test is not only for this particular disease, ELISA test is also there for other diseases like dengue. That means to know the antibodies, ELISA test can be used. Then one more thing is convalescent plasma therapy. This is just a stop gap arrangement. There are diverse opinions. 
with regard to whether it is effective or not. Then another drug, this is tocilizumab. This is being used on the seriously ill patients. These are with regard to COVID-19. And one more point is COVID-19 is RNA-based virus. Further details, we will deliberate in the upcoming classes. This particular satellite, Cosmos 2542, this is into the news. There is diverse opinion or USA says one thing, Russia says other thing. Anyhow, I will explain about it. Russia says it is the small satellite to inspect others. We are talking about Cosmos 2542. United States of America says it is a projectile or anti-satellite weapon. And in this context, let me tell you two important aspects. Anti-satellite weapons or anti-satellite test that was conducted by India last year. That is Mission Shakti. It was the first kinetic test conducted by India and India entered into the elite club of countries who have that capability. So Mission Shakti that is anti-satellite test or first kinetic test conducted by India. With that India assumed that capability. It created space debris but as the debris is created in the low earth orbit it has gone away. This is one point. Second is China conducted in 2007 and it created huge space debris at higher elevations. And next important aspect is this debris or this space debris can create chain reaction that may affect the satellites in the long run and causing chain reaction because of space debris. That is Kessler syndrome one should not forget. And Outer Space Treaty that pertains to 1967 and Outer Space Treaty cannot prevent militarization of space. It merely says consultation among the countries to prevent potentially harmful interference. Other than that, it is not mentioning anything else. So friends, Outer Space Treaty of 1967, it cannot prevent militarization of space. Then let us look at Digantara. This is Space Debris Monitoring System. This is by some private firm in India. And when one looks at Space Debris, Project Netra comes to my mind. Project Netra, that is the project of ISRO, it is to detect the Space Debris or to be specific in scientific parlance, it is for Space Situational Awareness and Management. This point do not forget. Space Situational Awareness and Management. Project Netra by ISRO is for that purpose. That is to look at space debris. At the same time, satellites are being maneuvered to prevent space debris attack. And till now, the satellites are maneuvered by taking information from other space agencies like NASA and once Project Netra becomes operational then it will have its own surveillance system with regard to the space debris. This is the first important aspect. Then one more point is once Project Netra is operational in the first phase it will look at low earth orbit satellites or you can say space debris in the low earth orbit level it will track in the first phase and in the second phase or you can say ultimately the project project netra will look at space debris in the geostationary orbit it will also look at the missile attacks or other space attacks on our satellites these points are important when one looks at Project Netra. So, Project Netra that is to look at space debris and that is to look at the satellite maneuvering techniques by using our own intelligence and surveillance. Till now, for the maneuvering of the satellites, we are dependent on organizations like NASA. But in future, we will have our own space surveillance network or space situational awareness and management. This is about 
project netra and on similar lines one startup started this digantara this digantara is to look at space debris monitoring system and light detection and ranging technology or lidar will be used and one point i have forgotten to tell about project netra project netra will look at space debris up to the extent of 10 cm then this digantara by using this lidar when lidar is being used one more point comes to my mind that is with regard to the speed of wind direction of wind when some firm is establishing wind power project to detect the speed and the direction of wind lidar technology is used and the lidar is into the news in the context of offshore wind power plants all of you are familiar offshore wind power plants are planned in two locations one is gulf of kambath off the gujarat coast and the other one is gulf of mannar off the tamil nadu coast so in these two locations now investigations are being conducted with regard to using this lidar how much speed of the well wind is there and what is the direction of the wind all these things will be tracked by using lidar technology or you can say this light detection and ranging technology that is prominently used in establishing wind based power plants or wind mills you can say so by using this lidar technology digantara a space startup that is going to have this space debris monitoring system so please differentiate between project netra and digantara digantara is the startup to look at the space debris monitoring system project netra has got several other goals and broadly it is to be termed as space situational awareness and management friends most of you are well aware about these malwares sometimes malwares may be used this black rock this triada lotur this hiddat these are examples of malwares in the upsc such type of questions may be asked and similarly one more point comes to my mind that is private equity tiger global then softbank silver lake these are into the news in the context of investments into indian companies and these are examples of private equity companies silver lake tiger global then softbank these are all examples of private equity companies they are investing into indian companies so friends this is another important aspect friends uae it launched al amal nowadays mars is the focus as far as expeditions are concerned in recent times this al amal tianwen 1 then perseverance rover these three are launched by uae china as well as united states of america just have a glance at it and europe after some time is going to launch rosalind franklin all these are pertaining to this mars mars is under the focus because of several reasons if at all human life is possible that may be possible only on mars when one looks at other planets if you exclude earth earth is having human life and there are seven other planets are there out of these seven planets there is every possibility if at all human life is possible that is possible only on mars and now several satellites are being sent to probe whether life on mars is possible or not friends this ends these are banned by the government and these are known as this e smoking or you can say e smoking is banned in our country electronic nicotine delivery systems are banned it is inhaling capsules of nicotine in a vaporized form friends tobacco if you look at the tobacco tar is there nicotine is there other chemicals are there please listen carefully tobacco tar nicotine other chemicals nicotine gives a kick whereas tar and other chemicals they cause cancer 
they spoil the lungs this is about tobacco nowadays people are coming with this e smoking or this electronic nicotine delivery systems if you look at electronic nicotine delivery systems it has nicotine and other chemicals chemicals are added to give different flavors nicotine as such it may not be cancerous but the chemicals are dangerous the chemicals which are being used as a flavors they are dangerous that's why the government banned this electronic nicotine delivery systems right so friends nicotine is there both in tobacco as well as in electronic nicotine delivery systems this point all of you should not forget let us look at the next one this is about policies and programs today i am going to explain in detail about mahatma gandhi narega a question is expected on mahatma gandhi narega mahatma gandhi narega is demand driven core of the core scheme what is this core of the core scheme now the centrally sponsored schemes are in fact rationalized and subsequently six schemes are identified as core of the core schemes and mahatma gandhi narega is the one core of the core scheme the nodal ministry is ministry of rural development as per mahatma gandhi narega women participation must be one third but normally women participation is around 50% or sometimes more than that then gram sabhas they have to conduct statutory social audit or social audit is mandatory as per the act social audit is mandatory and this is to be organized by gram sabhas every 6 months then 60% allocation is for productive assets linked to agriculture allied activities so 60% of the money is linked to productive assets linked to agriculture and allied activities at the district level another important aspect then work should be provided within 15 days otherwise this unemployment allowance is to be paid by the state government then the payment is to be made within 15 days otherwise compensation is to be paid and these aspects are most important sometimes upsc stresses on these things first one is average annual mandates 40 to 50 they are hovering between 40 to 50 friends all of you are familiar 100 days they are supposed to be provided with 100 days based on the demand that means if the adult citizens in rural india if they ask the government is required to provide up to 100 days but on an average if you see it is hovering between 40 to 50 this is one important aspect in recent years average mandates created per annum for each individual that is hovering between 40 to 50 please do not forget in exceptional circumstances when there are droughts and all 100 days can be expanded to 150 days one more point is the expenditure in recent years if you look at during the past 5 6 years the expenditure spent on mahatma gandhi narega that is hovering between 0.3% to 0.4% of gdp of course in 2020 2021 because of covid 19 it is expected to increase much beyond this because the government increased the allocation right so 0.3 to 0.4% of gdp in recent years and in the current year it is expected to increase because government is giving trust to mahatma gandhi narega in the backdrop of covid 19 effect on the economy then as percentage of government expenditure if you look at the percentage of government expenditure for this mahatma gandhi narega during the past 10 12 years it reduced from around 2.5% to 2.2% so you can say during the past 10 12 years as percentage of government expenditure it reduced from around 2.5% to around 2.2% but it is expected to increase this year because of covid 19 these are the important aspects then district level ombudsman that is mandatory 
district level ombudsman if there is any dispute to settle those things ombudsman must be at the district level geo tagging that is mandatory center will pay this point is important center will pay 100% wages for unskilled manual work 100% wages for unskilled labor that is to be borne by the center whereas 75% when it comes to material cost when it comes to skilled semi skilled workers it is 75% borne by the center 25% by the states then gram panchayat what is the role of gram panchayat what is the role of gram sabha students must have clarity gram panchayat means issuing job cards that is the role of gram panchayat so gram panchayat issues job cards and valid for 5 years and gram panchayat responsibility to allocate work within 15 days gram panchayat monitors implementation then what is the role of gram sabha gram sabha decides the order of priority for the works which work is to be taken up first which work is to be taken up later all these things will be decided by gram sabha and social audit every 6 months that is to be arranged by gram sabha so friends the differentiation between gram sabha and gram panchayat as far as this mahatma gandhi narega is concerned students must have clarity then mahatma gandhi narega wages are revised annually center revises these wages and the new rates every year are effective from april 1 and they vary from state to state one more important aspect is here these are based on consumer price index for agricultural laborers cpi al is released by labor bureau these are the important aspects then recently center announced that in future they will be linked to the newly devised cpi rural this is another important point at the same time in general the wages for mahatma gandhi narega are lesser than minimum wages in most of the states or you can say for agricultural laborer minimum wages prescribed in several states are higher than the wages for mahatma gandhi narega these points are important then development of individuals farmers land suppose individual farmers land is there using mahatma gandhi narega for developing farmers land that is allowed when the farmer is sc st or other aspects if you see scs sts women headed households in these types of categories it is allowed there are of course other categories also so friends prominently i covered most of the aspects pertaining to this mahatma gandhi narega or mg nregea i hope you got clarity now because one question is expected either on mahatma gandhi narega or food security act or rti that is the normal feature every year in some other class we discuss about the food security act right friends after discussing in detail about these things let us look at some random thoughts before going to the random thoughts today is thursday we have connect the dots in today's connect the dots we are going to discuss four most important ones one is ecological impact of green revolution second is economics of animal rearing indian farmer quite clearly understood it third one is nitrogen use efficiency is low in our country at around 33% what are the reasons for it then agriculture supply chain how the recent agriculture reforms will help agriculture supply chain these four prominent aspects we are going to deliberate in today's connect the dots connect the dots is being presented on tuesday and thursday as well as editorial discussion on monday wednesday friday let us look at random thoughts first one is nclt national company law tribunal national company law appellate tribunal these are established under the companies act most important one under the companies act these are established these are not established under insolvency and the bankruptcy code insolvency and the bankruptcy code about the details we discuss in some other class under economy so nclt 
and CLEAT, which looks at the resolution of stressed companies. These are established based on Companies Act. Then, with the introduction of IBC, the stressed companies are moving towards resolution than liquidation. Friends, this can be wrong or you can say this is absolutely wrong because even with the introduction of insolvency and bankruptcy code, more and more companies are going towards liquidation out of the resolution process which is entrusted to IBC or you can say out of the total companies entrusted to NCLT under insolvency and bankruptcy code, majority of the companies are going for liquidation. But as per insolvency and bankruptcy code, the preferred methodology is resolution. When resolution takes place, then what happens? It creates value to the company. Otherwise, it will be sold and the money will be distributed among the stakeholders in a led down order. That is IBC. As per IBC, the preferred option is resolution. But most of the companies are going towards liquidation. This is the irony. And two, three points I would like to tell you. With the introduction of IBC during the first three years, a question may be asked whether the recovery rate increased or not. Absolutely, recovery rate increased. Time taken for resolution or liquidation, whatever it is, that is reduced. And the costs of resolution, they also came down. That means when there is a dispute, costs associated with the dispute or costs associated with resolving the issue of stressed companies, that also reduced. So three things, do not forget. First one is the recovery rate of the stressed companies, the recovery rate for the banks that increased. Second is the time taken for resolution that reduced. And the third one is the costs associated with resolving a dispute, they reduced. These three points, three positive things happened during the first three years of insolvency and bankruptcy code. This is one important thing. Then serological surveys. And I already told you, serological surveys are conducted to assess the prevalence of disease in a population. Quite often you come across some 50%. They are having antibodies in Tharavi, 21% in Ahmedabad, 30% in Pude. These type of studies are known as serological studies. That is to assess the prevalence of a disease in a percentage of the population. Then this IgG ELISA test, it is one of the mechanisms to assess the prevalence of antibodies. Then ethanol makes petrol to burn more efficiently. Absolutely correct. Ethanol that makes petrol to burn more efficiently and because of that it reduces vehicular emissions. Absolutely correct. Because of ethanol blended petrol, particulate matter that will be reduced substantially and not only that, it makes petrol burn more efficiently. This is another prominent thing. Previously we discussed about HCNG. I am not repeating it. And the previous lectures we talked about HCNG, then green hydrogen. These are most important ones. With the switch over to BS6, there will be 80% reduction in the sulfur content in the fuel. Absolutely correct. Sulfur content is reduced from 50 to 10. Next one is with regard to diesel engines. How the pollutants will be reduced in the diesel engines? When one looks at the petrol engines, of course, already the particulate matter is low and it will be further reduced. NOx emissions will be reduced in the petrol engines by around 25%. And let us look at the diesel engines. In the diesel engines, these are expected to reduce hydrocarbon plus nitrogen oxides by 43% and particulate matter that will be reduced by 82%. This is the most prominent aspect. So friends, when one looks at the reduction in the emissions with regard to switch over to BS6, first point is sulfur content is reduced from 50 
to 10. Second important aspect is particulate matter will be reduced to substantially when one looks at diesel engines. Already in the petrol engines, particulate matter released is less. When one looks at the diesel engines, particulate matter emissions will be reduced by 82%. When one looks at nitrous oxide emissions or you can say nitrogen oxides plus hydrocarbons are popularly known as NOx emissions hydrocarbons. They will be reduced by 43% and NOx levels by 68% in diesel engines and the NOx levels in the petrol engines will be reduced by around 25%. So these points are important because we switched over to BS6. With the switch over to BS6, sulfur content is reduced by 80% in the diesel engines, particulate matter emissions reduced by 82% then NOx emissions, these are reduced by 68% in diesel engines, 25% in the petrol engines. These are the prominent things one should not miss. Then excessive usage of nitrogen fertilizer that may lead to soil acidification. This is absolutely correct. Fertilizer is the essential commodity under the Essential Commodities Act 1955. This is also absolutely correct. This is into the news because recently some of the onions, potatoes, some of the food commodities were taken out from the Essential Commodities Act. In this context, students must have clarity. Fertilizers is the commodity under the Essential Commodities Act. India's Atmanirbhar package that gives direct stimulus. Please listen carefully. Direct stimulus up to the extent of 10%. This is absolutely wrong. Though the package is around 20 lakh crores of rupees or which tant amounts to around 10% of GDP, but direct stimulus is around 1% of GDP. Remaining are all programs which will benefit in the long run. Then yields on long term central government securities in recent years are generally in the declining trend. If you look at the yields, they have fallen from around 7.5% or 8% to around 6% or so. Then Employees Provident Fund Organization. This is into the news. It is the statutory body. It is under the Ministry of Labor. Then Board of Trustees will be there to manage the affairs of Employees Provident Fund Organization. It is the statutory body and it is India's largest pension fund. Then India has free trade agreements with both USA and European Union. Absolutely wrong. Now people are talking about limited trade deal with United States of America and for several years BDIA, broad based trade and investment agreement with the European Union that is pending. Then the committee of creditors under IBC only include the financial creditors in the committee of creditors which take important decisions as far as insolvency and bankruptcy code is concerned, that constitutes financial creditors only. When you talk about financial creditors, please don't forget, banks, they gave loans, they became financial creditors. As per the instructions given around two years ago, home buyers, they are also financial creditors. Financial creditors have overwhelming powers under the IBC framework in comparison to operational creditors, right? At present, the appellate body of WTO is dysfunctional. Absolutely correct. Because of United States of America, it is not agreeing for the appointment to the appellate body. Because of that, quorum is not there. Three members minimum required to conduct appellate body activities. But at present, Appellate body is without minimum required three members. Center can withdraw from Consolidated Fund of India to pay GST compensation to the states. It cannot withdraw from Consolidation Fund of India or Consolidated Fund of India for paying GST compensation. This is the important aspect. Then Project Netra can warn against missile or space attacks. As per the circular issued by ISRO, Project Netra, that is for space situational awareness and management. It can track space debris in the first phase, in the low earth orbit, in the second phase or in the final phase. You can say 
in the geostationary orbit and it can also look at warning against missile or space attacks. Suppose some missile or space attacks are anticipated, it can warn the government. Then India depends on China for around two-third of its requirements in active pharmaceutical ingredients. Absolutely correct. Then India imposes safeguard duty on solar panels modules. There is no basic customs duty on solar panels modules because India is a signatory to ITA1 because of that. There is no basic customs duty, but India imposes safeguard duty on solar panels modules. Next one, last one is Directorate General of Trade Remedies, DGTR, that is under the Ministry of Finance, absolutely wrong. This is under the Ministry of Commerce. This is the newly created body for around one and a half years ago. I am talking about Directorate General of Trade Remedies. It is under the Ministry of Commerce. It looks at conducting investigations when there is injury to the domestic industry because of imports from other countries. TGTR, that is the newly created body, that is under the Ministry of Commerce. With this, let us conclude the ninth module. Have a nice day. Thank you.